Hello and welcome to White Horse Music TV! My name is Richard Bodiner and I'm co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife Michelle, who's not here right now. Um, today I am showing you how to re-string a violin. Uh, there is a lot of people who are, you know, unable to get to their teachers, unable to, unable to get to a shop, uh, unable to get to someone who usually changes their strings, and I am here to help you, so let's give this a go. All right. Now, there's a few things to check before you start tuning, before you start restringing your violin. First of all, you want to have your strings out and ready, so that you're not leaving the tension off your, your bridge for too long. You want to make sure that the bridge on your violin is straight and vertical. Um, I like to have my bridge. You see, I usually carve them so they're very, very, very slightly leaning back. Um, that's good because if you're tuning your violin, usually you're um, tuning it upwards and that uh, motion pulls the strings in that direction and can pull the bridge in this direction. Having it leaning very, very slightly back means that the, the strings are less likely to engage enough to start pulling the bridge forward and eventually for it to go So that's why I have it like that. Okay. So if you find that your bridge starts out and is looking like this, leaning well forward, then to remedy that, you will get the bridge between your thumb and two fingers here in your left hand, and then grab the bridge by the top here and pull it back to vertical. There you go, that's nice and vertical. All right, so that's right. Uh, you want the violin also to be in tune before you start. Because as I said, it's really important for them, the strings to still be applying pressure to the bridge. The bridge being applying pressure to the front of the violin, and then that front of the violin applying pressure to the sound post inside. If you take off too much tension, the sound post inside can fall down. So you don't want that. So you want the violin to be in tune. This violin is pretty much in tune. It doesn't have to be like really, really in tune. Um, but if it's really floppy and out of tune, I have a tuning, a couple of tuning videos. You can go back to those tuning videos and tune your violin up and then come back and start from here. All right, now, so I'll start with the G string. So to start with, take off your G string, just unwind it here at the peg slowly. And then eventually after a few winds, it pulls out like that. And then Keeping a little bit of pressure on it there, pull that um, little knob out of the, the ball of the string out of its little hook. Okay, so I've taken that out. There's a few things you can do while the um, string is off your violin. Firstly, you can wipe down your fingerboard, because you don't often see your fingerboard naked like this, and you will find that you get a fair bit of grime out from um, the fingerboard. See, that's going quite dark there from your from your fingers over the years and that sort of thing yeah um, and that can really help to improve the tone clear it up because you don't have this mush under there okay another thing that's really important um, uh, is to bring out the fine tuners and you will have seen that in the, the tuning videos anyway if you've gone back to tune so you want to bring uh, Bring them out because if they're right down the bottom, like I'll bring it right down the bottom, then you will have no more room to, to play with the, the fine tuner. And then tuning, you'll have to constantly be tuning it at the pegs. So bring it right out so that it's still engaged, but is out just as far, just about as far as it'll go. Okay, so that's a good one. Um, next step is to pull out the peg and if you have found that while tuning your violin that um, the pegs are too tight, really, really hard to turn, then we have this stuff called peg paste. And you can apply one line like that. I'm not going to do it on this one because I'm not going to use this peg paste. But one line across and just a thin line, not much pressure. And then put the peg back in and turn it a few times and that'll line coat the inside of the peg box with that peg paste and make it easier to turn. A lot of people will use that peg paste for the wrong reason. They'll use the peg paste because the peg is slipping out of tune 
And that's not really what this is for. This is for making the, the peg more easy to turn. And if you're adding something that makes it more easy to turn when you have a peg that's already too easy to turn, then you can make it slip. I have this other stuff which I love called peg drops. Um, and so with this peg drops, it, um, it has a little bit of grit in the, in the fluid. So when you apply one little tiny drop to both stops, both spots on your peg where it touches the peg box, and you plonk it back in here and give it a few turns, you can instantly feel more grip. And that is a more common problem than the opposite, which is, you know, the peg slipping all the time, or the peg um, gripping too tightly. So, okay, I've turned that a bit. I can feel it engaging a bit better. Um, third thing, important, um, you want graphite, the nut groove and the um, bridge groove. So using a pencil, pencil lid, quite generously applying some of that pencil lid both to the nut and to the bridge. Now what that does is um, when the peg is tuning, it's moving across these parts and if it um, catches, the peg might stump, uh, sorry, the string might start coming apart and you know, that'll reduce the, the time your strings will be alive and you won't, don't want that. So the, the graphite will make it smoother. So it won't, it won't have that problem. All right, so you've done those things while the string is off. Now I'll pull out my Eva Parazzi G-string. We often refer to these Eva Parazzi's as evil piranhas because they're bright and bitey strings. All right, now I usually like to start at the peg head end. So you'll see you want to line up the peg hole with the spot on the nut where the, where the G-string belongs. So you've pulled out the peg so that little hole is in line with where the nut is. You poke, poke the, peg, the string through the peg and start winding, not on the side of the peg head like I'm doing there. No, no, no. Go back. You start winding on the other side, the side away from the peg head. And then, so this is my little trip, trick, not a trip, yeah, my little trick, um, pull it back over so now it starts winding on the side of the peg head. That way it's looped over itself and it's locked in the string so it's less likely to come tumbling out. Okay, so I, I wind it up so that this uh, sil silking is in line with the, um, with the nut and keeping tension still on this string I bring it along and I get the, the ball and I hook it in under the little hook there. If you have trouble getting in and under the hook, you can use a pencil or a pen just to push the little ball in into the hook. There you go, there you go, there. It didn't cooperate for a second there, but it did eventually. All right, so I've still got a bit of tension there both at, at both ends. Make sure it's aligned at the, the nut and aligned at the bridge and then tune it up so you want to make sure this is pretty much in tune and now it's still applying the correct amount of pressure to the front of the violin so your sound post is less likely to fall down and then pretty much you repeat repeat that process for the rest of the strings I'll do it quickly um, in fact I'll do the D string you can watch the D string and then the rest of the process is pretty much the same. So pull out the string, wipe down the fingerboard, I'll put a bit of pencil lead, put a few couple of well one peg drop in each little spot on the peg there and tighten it up. And then plunk your D string in through the hole. Start winding on the other side and then bring it back over to the peg head side and then plonk the ball in. And how super fast was that? 
tune it up. And that is how to restring your violin. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.